Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Couch with the Psych Guys. My name is Timothy Meyer, joined as always by Dr. Constantine Wukin. Hey, guys. Uh, so, a little bit of a funny thing happened this weekend. Okay. Um, uh, out to dinner with uh, my wife's sort of like colleagues, uh-huh. friends, like the, that sort of thing. Um, she's in the, the, the field of like maternal fetal medicine. Uh-huh. Um, so, so she has this one friend who's, who's an OBGYN. Okay. He's a really good guy. Um, and this is my like second or third time meeting him. And he goes, Hey, wait, Tim, you're, you're a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah. And so it's always interesting where where, where it's going to go from there. And he goes, Oh my gosh, like I, I love therapy. Like, like I love my therapist. I've been in, I've been in therapy, blah, 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 blah. Right. And I was like, Oh, you know, good. And he, and he looks at my wife and he goes, you haven't won an argument with this guy ever, have you? (laughs) And, and she, you know, said, no, I haven't ever. And I'm like, but you know, like we, we it's not winning or losing arguments, right, right, blah, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Honestly, I was thinking about it and it is a really good point. Like, right. like really, and, and honestly, I, I kind of get this question a lot. Like, mm. like, what is it like for you to be in a relationship? Like I do a lot of couples work as you mm-hmm. know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously I, I think I like to know how people's minds work pretty well, understand pathology and right. just human beings, right? So a lot of people ask me what it's like to, huh. to be in a relationship. And it, and interesting with, and I'm sure you right, get it right. too, right? You know, your wife is a, is a psychologist, so right. both of you are therapists, right? right. right? And so it's, it's kind of funny uh, looking at like the, the questions that we get mm-hmm. about being therapists in relationships. For sure, for sure. And it's, yeah, you're right. And when, when people look, let's say, either at the website or just know in, in sort of personal circle, oh, you guys are therapists, right? Like, and um, my go-to joke is like, you're projecting, you're projecting, right? Like that's what, because that's what, a word that most people know. Yeah. So it seems, it, it seems common that that comes up. Uh, I do, however, interested to, to learn because your marriage isn't like that exactly. You're the yeah. therapist. She isn't. Right. So what your what I guess her colleague was saying, I, I do wonder how that really plays out for you, because in a way you are armed, if you will, with some information or, or a way of seeing and perceiving people yeah. that potentially your wife isn't because her field is very different from yours. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just different. And so, you know, I'm I'm interacting with human beings and understanding them and i like i have my whole education background Mm -hmm. training all that sort of stuff so yeah right like you know like kind of the way that i see it is (laughs) um i i see through Mm -hmm. right kind of like kind of like everything right like i know where this is coming from like i know her probably better than any person on the planet Right. right um so i know her unbelievably well right and I know people unbelievably well, and right. I know emotions, and I know how they work. Right. And so, with, when things pop up, I just, I, I just see through layers one through five almost right, right. kind of immediately. Right, right, right. I would right. And, that. and so that's that that's a great thing, but it could also could be, it could also be frustrating sometimes too. Well, for sure. And you know that's that's interesting that you bring that up. And let me know if this ever comes up for you guys. I remember I had. I forget, it was a colleague or colleague's, colleague's friend, somewhere, we were out. Hmm. And this, oh, I remember, she was like a, uh, like a research assistant, I remember, for, for one of the hospitals. And, uh, and I don't know how we got, got on this, but basically she said she grew up, both of her parents were psychologists, huh. right? Which is a problem to begin with, <laughs> but aside from that, she she said something that I kind of I never thought would be an issue. I thought like being a psychologist therapist would arm you with this information that you could be super helpful, right? You would think mm-hmm. know when to validate, when to help to restructure behavioral activation, all 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 that jargon, right? And I remember she said she was you know maybe like fifteen years younger than myself, and she goes like, you know, the problem with having. Uh, parents, and she really honed in more on her dad, is that he knew me so well Mm -hmm. during adolescent time and young adulthood, I never had privacy. And I was like, I don't know, what do you mean by that? Like, not, you can't close the door. She goes, no, 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 it, it was much worse because, no, I, I had my own space, you know, boundaries, but because he knew me so well, I didn't have personal emotional boundaries because he could see right through what I was doing and why. So in a way that felt safe, but also felt uncomfortable because I didn't have that internal safety that most people have of their parents, let's say, are not therapists or psychologists, just kind of r- just reminded me when you were saying it. And I was like, 
holy shit, I never thought of it that way. I right. never thought that knowing somebody so well could also make a person feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's sort of like, <laughs> it's like maybe I, I don't want you to see through right. all five layers. Exactly. Right? You know, as, as soon as I say something. Right. Right. Like, like maybe I don't want your interpretation. Maybe I don't right. want to know exactly where this is coming from every single time I feel an emotion, right. Tim. Right. <laughs> maybe I just, I don't know, kind of want to sometimes feel what I'm feeling right. and just, I don't know, maybe not have you like try to fix it all the time <laughs> or, or all those sorts of things. Right. So, you know, it, 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 it could be kind of like the, the simplest little thing if she's, oh, I don't know, feeling like if I'm noticing that she's feeling anxious mm -hmm. or if she's like, she's worrying about something, you know, it's almost kind of hard for me not to just like right. find out a little bit more, <laughs> draw the dots of where it's connected to and right. sort of like suggest some things right. to do. Um, <laughs> Well, that could go, listen, I feel like if you hit it at the right time, that could be super helpful because it gets out of, sometimes it could sound super invalidating, like you don't understand my pain, all you want to do is fix things, which only makes things worse. So there, there's that push and pull I could totally see. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's always coming from a good place. Right. Like I always, you know, I right. want her to feel good, or, right. you know, like I, I don't, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, it, but it could be, it, it could be tough for her. And, and sometimes she'll, you know, kind of give me an eye roll mm. and uh, Don't like, like make, make it clear <laughs> that I need to like shut up a little bit and like be more normal. Right. right? <laughs> uh, but, but also a, another interesting thing that pops up is, um, you know, when we do argue, mm -hmm. right. As, uh, as, as her friend was saying that she's never won an argument, right. <laughs> you know, something that I always say, and I say this to a lot of couples too. Um, I say like, would you rather be right or together? Right. Right. Because it, it really, I, th I think it's really an either or if, if, if you only want to be right, then you're not going to be together. Right. Um, so anyways, as I'm working to be together and not just right, <laughs> which is, is very important. Um, you know, so, sometimes what I end up hearing is that I'm sort of able to, okay, let's say, you know, if we go like put, put, put our EFT hat on mm -hmm. real quick, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we want to hear the other person, validate, listen, empathize, understand, make sure that they feel really heard, say things like what I heard you say right. was blah, 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 blah. And so maybe I do a really good job with that because <laughs> I do that for like half my day anyways. Um, and maybe someone who's not a marriage therapist isn't so good at it. Um, and so maybe I might be walking away from, and we'll make this about me now. Right. Um, maybe I might walk away from some conversations not feeling totally validated or right. heard or right. cared for. Right. Compared to what I'm able to give too. Well, I was that so, so good that you brought that up because that was my kind of my next question. Because if we fall into that role of like providing, are yeah. we being provided? First of all, because maybe the other person isn't necessarily as, as equipped to do it. And also, you know, we kind of fall into a particular caretaking role, yep. if you will. So that might also be helpful to them, but but the clinician or the therapist in the relationship walking away, like I might be a therapist, I might know myself really well, but interpersonally, let's not forget, interpersonally, it's also about the other person meeting the needs. So that, that could be tricky. And my other was follow-up was like, also sometimes, to me, the danger there is like taking away the mystique of the person, kind of like mm -hmm. alluding a little bit of what I said earlier about that, that experience with the, with the daughter who didn't feel like had emotional uh, internal boundaries. Because the, the, if you know somebody really well, like the mystique of the person, who they are, is not necessarily appropriately cloaked. So yeah. then it becomes like too transparent. And I'm not even, so that also feels a little bit like, yeah, how do you maintain the relationship in that dynamic? Yeah, it's almost like, you know, your first four dates or something. Right. Um, you know, like as you're getting to know the person, <laughs> maybe from a therapist's point of view, it's like a, it's like, it's like a four, four meeting intake appointment <laughs> where like you really, you really get to know the person. And it's like, oh, wow. So you like, your dad was like that growing up. And then you're <laughs> connecting targeted. All, and you're kind of connecting all these dots and you're painting a picture and you're doing a little case conceptualization, yeah. whether you realize it or not. Right. And then by date number five, you basically have the person totally figured <laughs> <Right>. out. <laughs> so, so yeah, it takes a little, it takes away a little bit of the, of, of, of the mystique there and in, in let's say like a quote unquote normal relationship right. where neither person is a therapist um like there's a little bit of mystery there right like we don't fully understand where everything is coming from um right. 
but maybe a guy like you or a guy like me kind of rather quickly will be able to see like, oh, this is how you normally feel. This is how you normally think. Right. These are what your automatic thoughts go through. This is what your attachment's probably right. like. Right. Um, these are the things that happen. And we could kind of see those five layers kind of right off the bat. Right. And you get a person all figured out, and then it's sort of like... To your point, yeah. It, but to me, it's also like if you, let's say in, in our relationship, because we could see each other pretty... Uh, thoroughly i would say so in a way it's good and bad because it's good because then you can you know exactly what the emotional needs are and interaction style is like so if you're like on good terms if you will then that works really well probably phenomenal right uh while like if if there's an argument then in a way you could i hate to use it think of it that then you could use it against the person kind of like you know how they're going to respond and when so there's a little bit so i you know to me it it's kind of like using a knife you know it's either you're you're creating a beautiful meal or you're Mm. stabbing somebody this is kind of the same thing you know with powers and what's the experiment with power comes responsibility to me it's kind of the same thing you have to really be almost like a kind person at heart to be able to use that only for the good because in a way if you know somebody really well it's so easy to you know to move into manipulation to move into you know making the other person feel pain if you're in pain if they caused you pain but you're doing it intentionally they didn't do it intentionally so there's just I just kind of want to throw it out there that it's a you know two therapists or a therapist and a non-therapist in a relationship isn't necessarily better uh, yeah. I mean, it could be better sometimes. It could be much worse sometimes as well. The other person feels don't psychoanalyze me. So there's a, that dynamic for us. The dynamic is we could use each other's knowledge, not necessarily always for the for the most positive. So there's uh, kind of that element to it. So I, I I think you know when people think oh you must have such a wonderful relationship, yeah okay yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe maybe yes and maybe no sometimes also so that that's kind of it's kind of my point because when two to me when two people are not necessarily into mental health or therapists or they don't even prioritize that there's lots of people just doing their own thing in different fields yeah. right to me there's it's not bad it's also kind of exciting because when you click you finally find somebody oh my god i don't know how but like she and I, or he and I, just we just click, mm-hmm. right? Without knowing what it is, so there's excitement and passion. That obviously, when they fight, they don't know why they're fighting or what the triggers are. Yep. That that might be, oh my god, I hate that person, right? But there's passion, there's excitement, there's like, wow, I didn't know I could find somebody like that before. That person is exactly what I look for, yep. right? But when you know, like that mystique, that mystery is is, is not there. Yeah, it's just it's a very different profound relationship but also not necessarily better so it, it, it's just just to kind of throw that it's it's, it's layered yeah and, and and you know it it really is interesting and, and i haven't spoken about this like you know mm. I, but, but but i've thought about it a lot and, and a lot of people do ask like like what's your relationship like and if it's in the therapy room right. i don't really talk i right. don't talk about it of course but you know like like friends and like I'll, I'll say something kind of quick like you know like off the cuff like oh like like it's interesting, you know, blah 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 blah. Like, <laughs> like those quick little conversations. But really, like, like when you unpack it like this, I've I've had loads of these thoughts. Um, I think it really is. I, I really like your analogy of that of that knife, mm. right? And um, just the term that I say a lot: hurt people, hurt people. Right. So right. in an argument, if you're right. feeling hurt and right. you're sort of armed with a knife, right. it's a kind of a big responsibility not to use that. A hundred percent. And we're people too, and we have emotional needs too, right? And if the other person isn't necessarily meeting them and you're always giving, you know, there might some reason. There's stuff that could build up. So to me, this idea of kindness to use it effectively isn't necessarily kind of like the, you know, with power comes responsibility. This is not necessarily always something people want to take on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, not not to mention that lots of clinicians, therapists get it in the field because they have their own traumas and wounds, right? So they have to heal that. Like, so it's just it's very complex. I guess is my point. It's so super that, that's kind of the that's kind of the message. You get a therapist, non therapist, two therapists together. They're overcoming their own stuff. They're trying to attune to others. They're helping others. So there's like this, uh, you know, compassion fatigue that might might set in. You know, there's l- lots of things they can come up uh, that I think you know. Might, might present some challenges and also you could be you know another thing that sometimes happens as you learn more you become a little bit too academic oh about it 
right? So, so then it's it's kind of like a cognitive conversation and missing totally the emotional piece because you say to yourself, well, I know it, but knowing and feeling and attuning and connecting is two different things. So that it becomes like a, a like a written paper that you're talking about about like <laughs> this. The research suggests this, and I'm like, we just talked about who puts away the garbage here. Yeah. I don't really need to know the research behind. Like, I just want like somebody has to do it, and, and like we got to figure this out really more practically. So again, once you have more knowledge, sometimes it gets like the, the, then you meander into this other conversation, and the garbage is still there, and and then. You know, and and before friend. you know it, you're just talking about theory. Right, exactly. You know, you gotta, like you explaining a concept on how people work and think and feel. And yeah, 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 before yeah. you know it, you might be lecturing. Exactly. And then you get told that you're she lecturing. Ever, she ever you know, fuck with you by taking a, a pen and paper, start writing down things that you're saying? That would, that would be a great prank. No, but she should. That honestly. would be a great. So, yeah, Tim, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me take this down so I can wipe my behind with it next puts, time I'm in the bathroom. Puts on glasses, kind of like just sits down with a notepad, like, right. it, tell me more. Yeah. Because apparently I don't know anything, right? Um, <laughs> that would, honestly. That would be a great If prank. she's listening to this. Yeah. Um, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, so so you know, safe to say, like like we're therapists, but that doesn't mean that the relationships are super simple. Right. Um, absolutely a blessing and a curse. Right. Um, I but but I do have to lean more on the blessing side, though. Right. You know, I think uh, you know, like like luckily, mm. I know what I know, um, and 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 I think everything that I know, and I'm kind of, kind of able to bring into the relationship in the right way, mm -hmm. like can really lead to a lot of good. Right. Um, it's just those, I don't know, we'll call it like 30%. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my guess The the, the 30% of the, the, the curse aspect of this mm -hmm. blessing and curse thing right. that, that does, <laughs> you know, <laughs> does lead to a challenge. I, I could see that. And you know, our, I, I would, I would agree, you know, a good amount is very helpful. Yeah. To attuning and connecting. Also, you know, the pitfall, at least for us, is also like becoming too academic, you know, yeah. and my wife is, is literally in an academic setting. I'm sure. Right. So then, then the conversation became a little bit more cerebral. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Like, this is not a lecture. This is not a discussion. It's not a panel discussion here. Just talking about who's taking away X, Y, and Z. Who so it's just, it could kind of feel a little uh, removed yeah. from the emotional piece. So it's kind of like always attuning to that, which is, you know, again, something just to be mindful of and to aware to catch ourselves to bring us back to like what, what we're trying to do here. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it's funny. Um, you know, I remember one time I was actually on the phone with your wife, Paula, mm -hmm. uh, because I was talking to her about right. a case that I needed right. some help with. Um, and, it, and, <laughs> and I don't think I've ever told you this. Uh -huh. it, was, it was actually pretty funny. Um, your kids were like yelling and screaming. I think she was like doing breakfast or something like that. And, and, and she, she told me what she was doing from like a therapeutic, <laughs> academic, theory-based standpoint. And then she goes, so hold on a second. And she puts the phone down and she parents in that way. And then she picks the phone back up. And so it was so funny literally hearing her I could see that. sort of uh, handle a little bit of a chaotic, I, I think one of your daughters like didn't want to eat this or that or the other thing, was giving her a hard time. That, that and, makes sense. And for, from what I heard over the phone as it was on the, the table, she handled it beautifully. <laughs> But I can only imagine that right. in your guys' right. stuff, right. you guys probably lean to like academic, professional, theory-based, right. probably really quick. It re really quick, plus <laughs> not not to get too psycho psychoanalytic here and psycho Plus, it's like a defense, not to want to talk about feelings, right? It's so easy to lean on theory, and this is why, right? And then you kind of move away from what you're really trying to achieve, which is connect at the end <laughs> of the day, you know? Because minds don't connect, feelings connect, right? Like so, then it's not. Kind of not the same. Yeah. Not the same. Super so, interesting dynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go, guys. Uh, it's a little bit more about what happens for us, how we are in relationships. Uh, always drop us a note if you have any questions. And then uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, guys. See you next time. Bye.